Now, I don't, I don't want to say that there are never instances where that's the case. I mean, I guarantee you that if I spent the next year writing a, an init system, it would be bad. Guarantee it. And, and everyone should say, that is bad. You should use one of these good ones. Okay, so thanks for coming back. Uh, we have sort of a rant today. Not really that much of a rant, but sort of a rant. I want to talk about how zealotry is bad and how it's really also annoying. Now, normally the ranting is by the zealots, right? Mm, normally. Okay, so this is like a rant, but of a different color. Yeah, I don't want to call it an anti-rant, but maybe. It's a rant about ranting? Well, no. It's a rant about being overly opinionated about things and trying to force that onto others. Oh, wow. That's like the modern era to a T. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but this, is, this has been around for a while. And I mean, the most obvious thing that you will see that stands out is, of course, all of the drama around System D. You know, there are people that will go on tirades about how System D is literally the worst thing in the world. And, like, there are valid reasons to dislike System D. However, even if there are valid reasons to dislike System D, and there are reasons that you don't want to use it and you don't like it, that doesn't necessarily make Lenart an evil guy. I've talked with Lenart several times. He's a nice guy, but people are very, very opinionated. And this goes this goes both ways, because you have the very opinionated negative, and then you have the very opinionated positive. For instance, tiling window managers. Oh Lord. Uh those those guys, they they are they are They have a lot to say. They have a lot to say and they are very passionate. Now, I want to be clear. I am not a tilingist. Some of my best friends use tiling window <laughs> managers. However, I used to. However, well, I was very heavy into it back in the day. Just because you like something a lot doesn't mean everyone else should. And I, I've noticed this over and over and over again. As somebody who really loves tiling managers, there's nothing wrong with that, wants to promote tiling managers, also nothing wrong with that, will find someone who is a brand new convert to Linux. Like, let's say they came from Windows or, or Mac. Let's say Mac. So they've been using a Mac. They, they've been using Apple, the OS X, whatever it is now. They come into a Linux community and they're like, hey, I just installed Ubuntu or I installed SUSE or Fedora and I've just gotten into Linux. And somebody, one of these tiling fanboys, will come rushing into the conversation and be like, you know what? You need to try rat poison. Okay, first off, that is a statement that you should never tell anyone in real life. Okay, <laughs> just, just don't do that. Don't, don't ever say that. It can be misconstrued, perhaps. Right. <laughs> but the, if you want someone to experience a tiling manager, let them get used to Linux first. Don't throw them so far into the deep end where they have to configure their desktop because they've just come from Windows and Mac where that was already done for them. They just got to use the experience. And I think that sometimes we do the overall community a disservice when people try to push sort of edge computing uses that don't fit what somebody may be looking for. Now, this is not to say that you can't promote, you know, a tiling manager that you'd like. Go for it. Have at it. But be reasonable who you're trying to kind of push that towards. Another example of this, not to just harp on tiling managers, is... So with Illumina Desktop, Ken has been working on replacing the current window manager, which right now we use Fluxbox on the back end for actually the window drawing. He's been working on a replacement. It's going to be custom. And every once in a while, we'll get somebody to come in and go, well, you know what you should do is you should just, you should make the new window manager a tiling manager. And our response is, okay, well, first, Lumina is a floating window manager. Uh -huh. Because of Fluxbox, we do have some tiling capabilities and we hope to have some tiling capabilities built in, but that's going to be kind of an optional extra it's not going to be the primary, but you'll get somebody who's like, oh, no, you really need to do tiling as the default because tiling's the best. Okay, well, tiling may be the best for you. Tiling is not the best for everybody. I think this should be well understood by the fact that the biggest desktops that exist are not tiling. Th there's a small group of people that really, really like it and really, really get the way it works. Awesome. But that is not everyone. And trying to force, you know, a, a niche like onto everyone doesn't help Linux grow and doesn't help us bring more people into the community because they see that kind of conflict and they see 
Well, this doesn't look like this is actually an easy replacement for me to, to jump off of Windows in. I understand. So I, I, I would say, though, there is a counterpoint here that I want to address. And when you're new to Linux and you don't know up from down, you probably don't understand some of the driving philosophies behind why Linux is done the way it is. And so you won't be able to discern between a software that cleaves very closely to Unix philosophy and separation of concerns and a software that kind of mixes it all together. You won't know. And it's very easy for you to just gravitate towards, oh, this works really well. And invariably, the things that kind of cut corners, like we talked about in an earlier episode, um, or, 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 you know, we talked about on, at the right too with Linspire, they cut corners. And that's one of the things that I disliked about them the most. They end up with a quote unquote better experience because things just work, but they've, they're violating a lot of the standards that we would hold up. It's just, this is what makes Linux special. And you're starting off as a person who has no idea with the thing that's not really following the Linux philosophy because it works the best. So I on on board with the tiling window manager thing. I, I did them for a while and I, I agree they're not for everybody. In fact, they're almost certainly not for most new people. Um, but there is a point at which you have to defend against some of the encroachment of done poorly or done wrong. As however I define or you define, because everybody defines it differently, done wrong. And I don't want to get someone introduced to Linux and they think that that's normal. Well, no, that's not normal. So that is the, the I just want to raise that before we get too far, far into this conversation. No, I completely understand what you're saying. Like, but I think there's also the, the practical counterpoint that we can look to that says, okay, when a student goes to school and they're going through middle and high school, we teach them Newtonian physics first. And then, then we teach them relativity. Now we know relativity is correct or more correct, depending on, you know, if you want to say relativity is wrong on certain things. Right. Not going there. But we know that that is a more accurate representation than Newtonian physics. But we teach Newtonian physics first. Why? Well, because it's simpler to understand and people can kind of wrap their brains around it and build those thought processes of understanding and trying to deduce how things work in the physical world. Once they have that base understanding, then we move on to the, okay, technically what we told you isn't quite accurate, it's good enough, but here's the way we really believe that it works with relativity. It's kind of like how calculus is taught, where they'll teach you derivatives the long way. Mm -hmm. Here, calculate this limit over and over again. Oh, a couple weeks later, haha, there's an easy way to do this, but you needed to have the, the background. You needed to understand what was going on. I think, yeah, I think with when you have people that are new to Linux is, first we need to get them in and get them comfortable before we start really pushing and dumping all the abstract technical stuff, which does matter. But when you're new, it's not the mm -hmm. thing you want to get into because people, if they get deluged with that, are going to go, okay, hold on. I don't want to be a computer science person. I just want a system that works and I can check my email and I can watch YouTube videos and, and do this other stuff. It's like introducing a car that's a manual to a teenager and that's what they learn to drive on. A lot of people, you know, in earlier times, this was their experience because a lot of cars were manual and that's just what we had. And maybe public transportation wasn't as far along, so you pretty much had to have a car to get anywhere. So, okay, if I want to learn to drive, I must learn to stick. Well, today... There's lots of public transportation in most urban areas. You don't actually need a car to do a lot of things. You can get around very well. So if I'm trying to teach uh, someone who's 15 now to drive and I start them on a stick, they'll be like, no, I don't need to do that. That's, that's sending them down a path that is not necessary, especially since most people don't drive stick anymore. Mm -hmm. This also veers into another topic, which is the same thing, and that is distro wars. Now, I definitely want to do a larger episode on this. Uh -huh. But this is another thing that we we see is, you know, people get involved in a community. Like, you know, you are a Slackware guy. I use Slackware. I like Slackware. And they kind of almost take that distro as sort of part of their identity. And then anyone else who uses a different distro is, they're not seen as we all use Linux. We're all on the same team. It's, oh, well, you should be using the distro I use. Because I have chosen this distro, therefore it's better, and you should use it too. And there are valid reasons to pick different distros. There's, I don't think there is one distro that rules them all. But there seems to be a lot of hostility that goes on between different distros. And I, my personal opinion is that this is actually a lot of the people that don't know much about Linux. Or mm -hmm. they... What would be the a cleaner way to say it? They're only used to the desktop experience from that distribution. They 
aren't ones that have dug in and actually done a lot of core stuff. So they're left with just seeing the distro as the representation of Linux instead of seeing there's Linux and then there's Ubuntu's way that they decided to build Linux. And there's the Fedora way that they decided to build Linux, a Linux distribution. There's one thing to be said about playful bantering back and forth. Like I have friends who are big Arch heads. They, they love Arch and I tease them all the time. I've used Arch before. I don't have a problem with Arch. Mm -hmm. I sometimes get annoyed with the Arch install process because I'm just lazy and I just want to get to the point of having a system installed. Mm -hmm. But then there are of course the right. Arch fanboys that go on rants about how every other Linux distribution is the worst and you shouldn't use it. And if you use it, you're a bad person because Arch is the true Linux. Um, that kind of stuff I think is a problem. And I think in some aspects this kind of just ties back to human nature and that we're tribalistic in many ways but my concern is that again new people coming into linux they see that kind of hostility and it's not playful hostility it's sort of aggressive hostility like it's legitimate hostility yeah yeah i was in the military for a while and you know i used to always tease my marine friends about how many crayons they ate that day <laughs> and they would they would tease me about, hey, when the air, air conditioning goes out on the Air Force Base, do you guys get hazard pay? <laughs> like, so it was playful bantering. Right. Back and forth. But it was all in good fun. It was kind of like a fun sibling rivalry. Because we knew that when live fire starts, we have each other's back. We're on the same team. We're just kind of mm -hmm. teasing on each other to, you know, poke each other's buttons for fun. Right. But I don't see as much of that on the Linux side. There is some of it. Mm -hmm. But it seems that the majority of the distro hate is, like, legitimate hostility. And I think that's a very bad thing, and we should really strive to, well, stop. I mean, I guess would be the simplest way to say it. Well, okay. I, I agree with that. It's, it's easy. It's, it's a very simple, straightforward goal. And I think it would help us to maybe to, to dive in a little bit deeper on maybe what's causing some of that tribalism. Um, perhaps the someone who decides to use Linux and, and invest in it is... I don't know. What's the percentage of Linux desktops by it's like one point six percent of total distributions out there? I'm sorry, desktops out there are Linux. It's a very small percentage. So by virtue of you using Linux, it puts you in a small group, a select group. I don't want to say an elite group. That's not where I'm going with this. Just a, a, you've made a choice that most people would not choose. You are using something that most people don't, and there's some degree of uh, embellishment or, or burnishing of my own self-confidence or self-image because I've made a choice to do something that's uncommon. And it's very easy to keep going down this lineage of, wow, this makes me special. I'm, I'm, I'm using something. Look how powerful this is. Look what this can do. And somewhere along the way, that gets conflated with, well, things that aren't me aren't good enough. I don't know how that happens or where it happens. And I'm sure as a younger man, I did a lot more of that. And going back to the beginning of the, of the talk, you were talking about System D. As a younger man, I used to rant a lot about System D. We had some discussions just last year about how much I disliked it. I've made my peace with it. It's everywhere. I've, you know, this is what it takes now to be a modern Linux professional. You must use System D. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll learn it and I'll do it. And I've since come to recognize some of its real benefits that I didn't recognize before. But as a younger man, I was very adamantly against it. And to the point where well, I'm not going to use Debian. I'm going to use Dev1 because it doesn't use System D. And I'm not going to use this or... I'm cleaving myself to Slackware because it'll never go to system D. I mean, heck, Slackware for the longest time, I don't even know if it still does. It didn't use PAM D because there's problems with PAM D and we don't want to do it. And it was, it was very isolationist in that respect. And I'm trying to cast back to those areas. It wasn't really for me about being part of my self-definition and my self-confidence. I think it was more about uh, seeking a better perfection, seeking a better engineering, a better this or better that. And that's, that's part of my drive. And when I see something that is superior by as I judge it. I'm like, why would you not be using the more superior thing? And that's, I can see where someone else would take that and go the next step and say, well, you've made the wrong choice. I'm trying to put myself in those shoes. Yeah. I think for me though, it, I get more confused because like what you were talking about before about how, you know, we're already sort of a niche because we're one point, whatever percent we have a niche, which is Linux users. We're all there, but then within that niche, then the decision is, well, we need to create niches of this niche, which is then you have the distro niches around the pie chart. And then, of course, mm -hmm. within those distro niches, now we're even talking a, sl you know, a, a tinier slice, you then have the, for instance, I'll use Fedora. 
you have multiple desktops on Fedora. So mm -hmm. then you get into the, the conflicts there of what desktop are you using on Fedora? Because Fedora is good, but you're using the wrong desktop. So like we keep dividing smaller and smaller into these little differences. Mm -hmm. And what's the word I'm looking for? Exacerbating, I think that's it, the, the, the tiny differences that we then arrive at, which is, for instance, tiling versus floating managers of a distribution of an OS of all possible OSs. Like the sets that we're, we're now embedded into, and then those are the tiny little things that we choose to create hostility about, seems odd to me. Yeah, I agree with it. And some degree of it must be I've wrapped up my self definition of my self worth, worth in what I'm using, the choices that I make. Especially in the modern era where a lot of things are so very public, and especially if you have an online presence at all, almost everybody on their online social media is putting out the best of themselves. And you see only the best. And a lot of the things that aren't so good, they're not mentioned or they're maybe not even intentionally hidden, but just, just, just I don't want to talk about it. I had a really bad day yesterday, so I'm just not going to post that day on, on social media. I'll wait till the next day when I'm feeling better. And so someone who doesn't have any input into your life and only sees this media feed, they're only going to see, wow, they had a really good day. That's, that's awesome. That's cool. And the expectation is, well, every day is awesome. Even the ones I don't see, they must be equally as awesome. And I think there's some degree of, well, I, I want to shout about the things that I'm loving that I'm doing well, that this is really great. And that may sometimes also come across as, I don't want to say it's misinterpreted as zealotry, but maybe it's a gateway into zealotry, perhaps. I think, I think for me, one of the differences is, is that it's not a zero-sum game. In other words, you know, tiling window managers are fine. They're nice. They can be very useful. They can be very efficient. That doesn't mean floating window managers are bad. But it seems that mm -hmm. when people end up in this state of zealotry, it's this one thing is good. And thus, by definition, then everything else must be bad. And it's that polarization that I think is the problem. I mean, definitely there's nothing wrong with having, you know, a niche of a niche of a niche of a niche of a niche that you really, really like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you works really well with your personality or how you like to, you know, compute or, or do whatever. That's cool. But that doesn't mean that a slight difference, someone using the same OS, the same distribution, but a different desktop, is suddenly making the bad choice. Like that's, I think, perhaps I explained it poorly initially, but that's kind of what I'm focusing on is that kind of zealotry that then turns into hostility against, you know, the Linux community, which is already a tiny niche. Like let's not fight amongst ourselves because uh -huh. if we want to be... Linux and open source evangelists and get more people in, the last thing we want to do is bring people in from Windows who, as far as they're concerned, you know, it's just a desktop. I turn my computer on. I do my things. They then suddenly come into Linux and they're like, oh, this is like Lord of the Flies where everyone is screaming at each other because <laughs> you're using the wrong thing and you're doing it this way and you should be doing it that way. And like, that's not a good front to put up. And I just... I worry that sometimes that's what people see and that's their first introduction because that's what I've seen before in IRC and in different other chat programs is somebody comes to Linux and in like the first mm -hmm. thing somebody says to them is, oh, well, what, what distribution are you trying? Oh, I tried Ubuntu. Oh, you shouldn't try Ubuntu. It's crap. You should go try insert other distribution here. Arch. Or, you know, oh, I, I really like the way Unity works. Oh, well, Unity's crap. You, sh you should really be using i3. Those things, if you know the person well, if you're a friend of them, then it's one thing to say, hey, I know you think Unity is the bee's knees. Not that bees have knees, but you think that's great. How about you try this and tell me what you think? Like one of the things that we did on last Linux Action Show way back was distro challenges. And... You know, Chris was not really down for the arch. And a whole bunch of people were like, no, 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 really, try it. Try it out, see what you think. And Chris, uh, he was didn't really want to do it. But then he did it, and he's like, oh, this is actually really great. I really like it. Like, that's the way to approach it. Mm -hmm. Not the, what you're using sucks, and you should do what I do. That That's not so cool, and we should not do that. Well, there's some degree of uh, use stress also that we can put on ourselves. Um, maybe we can do better. And I don't think this is where you're going, but I think it's a parallel. It's, it's alongside what you're we're talking about. Similar motivations. Like early on, I didn't want System D to become big because I, uh, this is not the Unix philosophy. This is not the way we're supposed to do things. I thought we were building a software, an entire ecosystem on well, do one thing and do it well. And here we got this thing that's doing many things, and some of them aren't do, aren't doing so well. I was not willing to see the forest for the trees there. 
Um, I wasn't willing to see the positive benefit that they were bringing in. I think it's it's okay for us to say, I don't like the way you're doing that. I think there's a better way to do it. But when you stray past that into you're doing it wrong, that's where this boundary is. Like I can disagree with you about System D, and we did. We probably still do to a degree. For the record, I'm actually an open RC fan. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, that's what uh, Void Linux uses, right? No, Void uses... It uses Run It, which I am not a fan of, actually. I actually really like Run It. I think it's great. Just, hey, create a file, and there you go. You're done. Create a directory. There you go. Done. I think that's very elegant. It's a perfect way of doing it, because everything in Linux is a file, right? So just make a file. Just make a directory, which, if you don't know, listeners, a directory is just a file with a listing of uh, files in it, effectively. Dentries. Anyway. I, I, I like this challenge to make things better. I want us to be challenging each other. You can do better. We can be doing better. This software can be better. And there is some degree of antagonism that goes along with it. But as long as it doesn't step over into you're doing it wrong. And I realize there are people that will say, you're doing it wrong. Let me show you what's right. And they could be right. There are people that, um, for instance, I'll pick on a project that is small. Uh, LCD proc was a very old project for if you wanted to have a little LCD, something connected to your computer and you wanted to print out to it, this was the driver that you would use. It was very clunky. It only supported certain sizes and types, and there was much better ways to do it. And I remember someone somewhere along the way stepping and saying, we can do better on this. And they did. And they started another something. I can't remember what it was called. I stumbled into this because I was trying to build little appliances that had an LCD panel in the front, and I kept fighting with LCD proc, trying to get it to do what I thought would be easy, and it just wasn't. I, mean, I think that it probably had some challenges. It was a small code base. It didn't have many contributors to it, and it would have benefited from me stepping in and saying, hey, I can help you out with this if I'd been able and willing to give the time. But someone did step in and say, we can do better, and they supplied patch sets or something because I remember it being much better a couple years later, and I did nothing. Someone somewhere said, this can be better. And we cannot lose that. If, if we have to tolerate some degree of zealotry that says you're wrong in order to keep that we can do better, I think I can be okay with that. As long as we can insulate people that are new from it to a large degree. And there's, there's never going to be someone policing IRC and saying, no, you can't tell someone you're doing it wrong. No, to stop with the tiling window manager thing. We get it. Here, go in that channel and rant about it there, and all the new users will bring them over here, and that way you won't pollute their minds or whatever. If there is, if this, if it requires that we have both so that we can keep that positive use stress, then I think I'm okay with it. But I would like for people to tone it down. Distributions are different. People like them for different reasons, and they have their own reasons for choosing what they do. And it's not just ignorance and it's not just pigheadedness for why I've stuck with Linux for this long, or it's why I've stuck with Slackware this long. I like it. You know, I know it has rough edges, but I, I still, to my core, love it. It's my first distro. It will always be my first distro and I'll never forget about it. So as many rough edges as it has, anyone that codes come and tell me, you're doing it wrong, Slackware's dumb, don't do it that way. Use Arch or one of the downstreams from Slackware that improves it or anything like that. I'm going to be like, okay, I respect your opinion. I'm going to ignore it. But I think it's okay for them to challenge me to say, hey, why are you still using Slackware when there's better options out there? Here's what's better about them. I don't know where the middle ground is there. Well, I think, again, at least for me, it comes back to, again, the principle of it's not a zero-sum game. Okay. When you say to somebody, hey, this can be better, that's a positive. You're, you're, you're pointing things in a positive direction. This is where it is. Mm -hmm. We can do a better job of this. That doesn't take away from anything that exists. You're not taking something and then making that a negative. You're building something better. You know, that's the whole point of software open source development is we have something and now we're going to iterate on it and make it better. And over time, things continue to improve. And that's, that's good. That's what we want. But that is completely different than saying this is bad and this is good. Now, I don't, I don't want to say that there are never instances where that's the case. I mean, I guarantee you that if I spent the next year writing a an init system, it would be bad. Guarantee it. <laughs> and and everyone should say that is bad. You should use one of these good ones. Can we just go ahead and pre-say that, JT, please don't make an init system? You know, so there are times when that is appropriate. But what we don't need to take things that are personal preferences and turn them into a zero sum where 
by nature of one being good, the rest must be bad. That's kind of the point that I am focusing on the most. Okay. I feel like, uh, I guess what I was trying to get to, I didn't do a good job of capturing that thought. Uh, the same, it's the same pre-thought or the genesis that would, that would uh, lead to a zealotry attacking someone else for their decision or saying we can do better. I guess is where I was trying to go. And I feel like I don't want to lose that initial pre-thought that says, boy, this could, this needs some work because that is valuable. Um, and a lot of times people are motivated to make a patch because, gosh, okay, this bug in wine has been ma making me annoyed for six months and it's not been addressed. I can fix that. You know, cue three months of diving into the code base to understand it so you can actually make a patch later. And you're like, was this really worth it? Well, yeah, now you fix this thing that bothered you for six months and it's fixed. And you've now got a contribution to your name, too. You know, you, you made the world better because you contributed to a project. By the way, I'd like to encourage all of our listeners you can make contributions to all these projects that you're using. And even if all you're doing is adding to documentation, you're making a big improvement uh, to everybody else in the world's lives because you've helped evolve Linux or some of these open source softwares in a, a, a tiny way. And all these little tiny evolutions make things better. So I encourage all of you, if you have been using Linux and you get this little problem with something, go figure it out and see if you can make a patch for it. Let's make the world better. Uh, take that stress that says, boy, this really is terrible. Guys, it's going to be a better way. Take that stress and put it towards something positive and make a patch. That sounds like a fantastic note to end on, Jeff. I think so, too. Yeah. So let's, let's say we're, we're focusing on the positive side and we're trying to eschew the negative side of this thought. And uh, zealotry has its place, but maybe that place is in your own mind and not shared. Hopefully, you just kind of keep it to yourself. But you should definitely share your opinions and thoughts on this episode with us. The email contact information will be in the show notes. By all means... Leave us a message. Tell us whether or not you think we're right or we're wrong, uh, and we will read them and we will respond. And hopefully we can get an interesting discussion about this. So thank you for listening, and hope you'll tune in next week.